Welcome back to Total War Therapy. I'm sorry I've been quite missing in the last days, but I'm back. And in this video, I really wanted to share with you my thoughts about the new additions of Ogre Kingdoms, but not from a lore perspective. I would prefer to focus on the battle gameplay uh, uh, field and how these units that uh, have been already announced will affect the actual roster of Ogre Kingdoms. We can start directly with uh, Golfang Man Eater. Yeah, I say the entire name. I hope YouTube will not uh, uh, put down the video. And uh, okay, he has basically the model of Over Tyrant. And I I'm sad about that. Just because, uh, you know, both Scrag and Greases added with the uh, normal DLC of Ogre Kingdoms, they have both a very unique model with a lot of personality, animation, and uh, I mean, from a new DLC character, I was expecting something more. Probably as a Tamarkan, they will add some kind of animation, but I think that overall, how you will use the, how you will use Golfang would be the same way you're using the over tyrant so just a big dude with a couple of weapon anti-infantry probably uh, more piecing and uh, yeah with uh, his kind of ability buffs but uh, not something special and unique we still know nothing about the generic characters and the legendary hero we can make prediction of course we already made them in the in the previous video and uh, yeah we have some feelings that the legendary hero can be Brag, Brag Gutsman, and uh, the generic characters can be... I have no idea actually, I really have no idea. I mean there are some options we have to understand if they want to do just a boring, uh, probably man -eater character, or they are uh, looking for something unique like the Ogre Kingdom uh, Paymaster, that, that would be my choice. The Paymaster, so kind of a uh, puffing unit with uh, probably a hand, uh, a shotgun. I mean, that would be my choice, and that would actually introduce some variety to the gameplay. Now we can talk about the units that have been announced. If you watch the previous works next, you already know what I'm talking about. First of all, the Thunder Task. We have been waiting for these units since the release of Ogre Kingdom, so we are very excited to finally get it in the in the game. But uh, my concern and my my hope, in some way, is that uh, it will it will offer more variety compared to the Stone Horde, because the problem with this kind of big monsters, and uh, in this case we are uh, we are still talking about uh, four legs. Uh, monster is that they can just give you the same experience so it would be just bigger tougher with a breath attack as they say but it would not be that different okay so i my my hope is that the stone uh, the sorry the thunder task will not be just an upgrade of the stone horn but something different i don't know which way there would be always probably a harpoon launcher somewhere and this breath attack, the frost attack but uh, yeah, so please give him something special, some kind of variety then we can uh, uh, start to talk about the blood vulture okay, they just introduced these birds in the first what's next and this is a very interesting, interesting choice choice because uh, I mean, it's a unit that can actually change a lot the gameplay of Ogre Kingdoms. If you think that would be a low tier unit flying that you can use to, I mean, as uh, the saber task at the end, but uh, flying that you can use to annoy archers or in general missile units of the enemy or, uh, yeah, as a skirmish uh, units, it can be very, very cool. They would not be, of course, uh, armored and tough like, uh, and with a lot of health, like the normal ogres. But uh, yeah, flying units like that, like the Onyx, the Crowman, 
they added the Tukete and so on. It's always cool. Okay, they always add something to the gameplay. And even if you consider that, uh, uh, I mean, they introduced in the last DLC, like the Thunderbird, so units that are very hard to address if you don't have flying units uh, that can target them. So getting this kind of uh, flying units is always very, very helpful for your strategies. And uh, yeah, quite appreciated. Now we can talk about the last unit that has been announced. That is the Yetis. Okay, they announced in a weird way, but we still got fun with that. And uh, yeah, they basically say there will be Ogre Kingdoms, who likely just uh, just their size, you know, not bigger, not smaller, the same size. They will have probably a first attack, and uh, I expect some kind of anti-infantry armor piercing damage. That it's uh, I, I, I would say unique maybe in the Ogre Kingdoms. I, I don't remember that well. But uh, I think so. Maybe the Iron Guards, but maybe they will move later the anti infantry bonus. So, the, yeah, the Yetis can represent actually a charging ogres with, uh, you know, specialized in infantry with frost attack, frostbite attack, and uh, yeah, they can be in some way original. I hope so. You know, I'm making this kind of videos because I want to point out that sometimes it's not that necessary to add many many units but add the right ones okay to not be repetitive redundant okay we don't want many units we want the units that can actually affect and change the gameplay they can add variety and and so on and for now the yoga kingdoms i'm a little in in the middle you know i, I know that probably green skins will give a lot of varieties with the new units but Ogre Kingdoms, and we will talk about Corn later, mm, a little less. I'm still concerned. You, I want uh, just these units to be different, not only from for the models or the animation, but even just for uh, uh, how to use them in the battlefield. Thank you for following me till here. Sorry, my voice a little depressed, but it's okay, don't worry. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content and uh, see you soon.